We might need this today. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. Look out, world. It's 80 degrees at the end of April and Fido's on the loose. And I'm over here just trying to install a hard drive. This is a Seagate Barracuda. These things were on sale on Newegg this past week for 50 each. So I'm curious, what does $50 get you in the hard drive world these days? This is the Barracuda 1 terabyte, Seagate's answer to the WD Blue. But I'm just curious what it does in terms of performance, but also efficiency as well. So our much to do about hard drives goes all the way back to the heady days of the silver bullet. When I would see a case like this, and I would be like, Dude, look at all these drive cages. I can totally fit all kinds of drives in here. I'm never going to have to worry about storage ever again. And so I eventually did fill up this drive cage as it is right now with three drives plus two more up here for a grand total of five hard drives. And I have never gone back to that since. I've since found out that quality over quantity matters with drives too. So over the years I've known hard drives as desktop or laptop drives, even though it's really three and a half, two and a half. And what started this house of cards tumbling for me was first of all the so-called laptop drives ending up in game consoles, but also seeing one of these inside a desktop for the first time ever in a corporate machine way back in the day. I don't want to say corporate workstation because it wasn't high-end, it was a regular business desktop. Basically, I found a two and a half inch drive and I popped the cover on one of those things. I was like, whoa, no wonder this thing's so slow. Little did I realize, though, that two and a half inch drives come in 7200 RPM variants too, even in laptops. This Hitachi, for example, from the HP Compact that I used to have, this is the original 300 gig drive from back in 2010, 7200 RPM. So the question is, if the waters are being muddied between these two drives, other than performance versus power efficiency, what differences are left in terms of whether to use a three and a half or a two and a half? Monolith, meanwhile, represented a departure from traditionally focusing exclusively on performance to focusing on efficient performance. Now that efficiency was part of the equation, the way things are arranged and organized and structured had to change as well. So since performance versus efficiency is the last remaining difference between so-called desktop hard drives and laptop hard drives, I'm wondering if I should switch out some of the three and a half drives in Monolith for two and a halfs, especially when just about every drive in the data array over the past couple of years has had a maximum transfer speed of about 100 to 120 megs a second, and we can now get that from two and a half drives that are 7200 RPM. So if so-called laptop drives can do that sort of stuff nowadays, maybe I should take the efficiency improvement of changing the data array over to two and a half inch and leaving one three and a half inch that's high performing for loading games that aren't loaded on the SSD. To better improve the efficiency of Monolith and not have to mess around with the kilowatt too much, I've started paying attention to the electrical ratings on drives. These things are printed on there with voltage and current, and if we use Ohm's law, we can multiply voltage and current to get power. So in this case, on the 5 volt rail, there's about half an amp. So roughly about half of the 5 volts is watts. So this thing would add probably about 2.5 watts, maybe closer to 2 and 3 quarter watts when it's added in versus this Seagate Barracuda from 2006 that was one of the worst drives that I tested in the last round of testing things with, uh, with Crystal Disk Mark. 60 megs per second max transfer. Man drives were slow back in those days. But anyways, if we go looking for the electrical information, which is kind of fine print on here, we, ah, there it is up by the Serial ATA logo. This one uses the 12 volt rail, of course, and that's nearly three quarters, so just under nine watts just from the motor plus about half of the 5 volt rail in watts for running the circuitry so nine two and a half this thing's almost 12 watts to your system all by itself for crappy drive performance here's the original delosaurus's final maxter drive and my final maxter drive period a 6060 as i called it because of the model number 60 gig ata 133 not even serial ata and what we have here is 670 milliamps, which of course is 0.67 amps, versus 0.96 amps on the 12 volt rail. 
so that's close to 12 watts just from the motor and over half like maybe three more so this could be like 15 more watts when you hook up a kilowatt to the system just from this one drive and to think you know I used to think computer cases were cool if they could hold all kinds of three and a half drives. It wasn't until I saw some of those obviously business and overhead cost focused two, uh, two and a half drives in business laptop, uh, laptops, desktops, that I started thinking in terms of power efficiency. Let's look at this WD one over here. So five volts, roughly half an amp, so two and a half watts from that, and that's basically it. So this one would be two and a half watts. And that's why these little drives help out the battery life and stuff like that. So let's see, is there's, there's gotta be something on here. I think it's underneath the, yeah, it's buried under there. But I already tested it and found out that thing only adds three watts, even though it's 7200 RPM. And then there's this disaster over here. The Toshiba drive from back in the day, the original hard drive from the original laptop in the mid to late 2000s. Five volts, one amp. This thing is five watts from a laptop hard drive. Using that very same Ohm's Law calculation with the new Barracuda, I think this would probably be around 12 watts all by itself. So this better have some really awesome performance when it comes to max sequential transfer. Let's hook it up in Monolith and replace the games drive with it, leave it blank and run Crystal Disk Mark on it and see just how good it does. The existing WD Green gets about 80 to 100 megs a second max sequential transfer. My newest Seagate drive was pushing 120 to 150. This should be better for the wattage that it's drawing. So before we go ripping out drives, let's check the incumbents and see where they're at in terms of performance, because I know in terms of wattage, they're all three and a half, so they could stand for some improvements. This is the main data drive. This is what comes up in Crystal Disk Mark for the main data drive, so maxing out at about 130 megs a second either way. Keep in mind, these are mechanical drives. They're going to be terrible at random reads and writes, as the numbers would suggest. But at the very same time, these are also optimal conditions. So if the drive is not fragmented, you might get something like etc. etc. Most of the mechanical drives that I've been using over the past several years have hovered around the 100 mark. It's only recently, with SSDs eating mechanical drives as lunch, that we've started to see some peppier drives. Next up, we have the backup to that data drive, which is substantially older, and the numbers show it. This is more in line with what I've seen from mechanical drives over the years when I've tested them. It also takes a while to spin up as well, so when the power saving clicks it off, anything that clicks it back on... Might as well be a siren. The newer ones are much faster to spin up from being clicked off and whatnot. So, yeah, that's a good candidate for elimination. I originally was going to replace it with the the newer Seagate that's getting replaced by the one I just picked up, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 5400 RPM 2.5, because this thing has no purpose except to serve as a backup for the main data drive. Very, very, very rarely do I go looking for something on this one and not on the main one. Usually when I screw something up on the main one, I go looking for it on this one. So it's not a priority. So it should be low, 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 low wattage. And here's the last of the incumbents, a 750 gig Western Digital Caviar Green that I picked up on sale to be the an expanded hard drive for the DVR at the Cable Nightmare all those years ago. Yeah, so it has numbers very similar to the backup of the backup. <laughs> And basically, it's, yeah, it's made for lower wattage and stuff, but the numbers are similar to an older drive at the time. Today's drives would probably be faster than this thing. But I've actually been able to use the green for gaming without load times being too abysmal. But this is probably the one that will end up getting replaced. And here they are, removed from the system, and just for fun, I also pulled the Delosaurus as one terabyte games drive as well, which is actually the oldest, loudest, and clunkiest of these drives. It's not even from this decade. Check out that date code, 2009, baby! <laughs> so, basically, the newest one is this desktop HDD right here, and the big thing is, followed by, of course, the backup drive, and the games drive is the WD Green, and this is from the Delosaurus. Now, here's the thing. These are three and a half drives. They're gonna pull from the 12 volt rail and they're gonna pull from the five volt rail. 12 volts for the motor that spins the platters and five volts to run the circuitry. 
So we already know what the voltage is going to be on all of these things in terms of power equals voltage times current. So the higher the current, the more the power draw, which would be the you know, current is drawn. So more current drawn, more power drawn because the voltage is the same across all devices. You're going to run into apples and apples, though, if you compare three and a halfs to two and a halfs where everything's on the five volt rail. So here's the old dinosaur, 0.65 and 0.6, the WD Green Hippie Drive, which is roughly the same performance, 0.7 and 0.55, so I don't know, I'm not so sure that Caviar Green's really worth it from a power saving perspective versus just finding some well-performing two and a half drives. Then the Seagate, this one from 2015 is the newest one. This is the one that spins up just like that. There is no whining with this one and it actually has the best numbers for performance, which I hope it would have, because 0.75 on both rails. This one adds the most extra watts per drive to Monolith. And then there's the drive from, that was the backup, 0.72.52, which is interesting, because this old Seagate that wasn't a hippie drive was 0.72.52, and the WD Green that actually was supposed to be power efficient is actually 0.70 and 0.55, and the performance of those two is actually quite similar. So the new drive is more in line with the newest Seagate that just happens to be the quickest. Makes me wonder if this amperage wattage stuff might have something to do with drive performance, even though these are all 7200 RPM drives. Speaking of which, let's make things more interesting here. This Hitachi Global Storage is what I'd like to replace the extra backup drive with. The one that does not need to be three and a half inches. And there's what it is right there. 5400 RPM, one terabyte, and only 700 milliamps or 0.7 amps on the five volt rail. So 0.7 amps on the five volt rail contributes less watts than 0.7 amps, say, on the 12 volt rail with, say, where's one with 0.7? Oh, yeah, right underneath it, of course. <laughs> So here's the idea. This thing is put out to pasture, probably replaced by this or the new one, and then this takes over for the old one that used to be the backup, because this thing doesn't need to be something that's really all that great performing, because it's a backup of a backup of a backup. If I need another drive, because one seizes up, then we'll simply just swap them. And for trivia's sake, this one terabyte Hitachi Global Storage 5400 RPM drive was the original drive in the turret Shiba. So yeah, I replaced that with an SSD years ago. The point of the Steam Drive is to let the laptops play Steam games, but I can be without a Steam Drive for a couple of days if it means that this one can go into Monolith and serve as a lower power alternative to that full three and a half that was in there, particularly the whiny one. All right, the new Barracuda is all railed up and ready to go. So let's see which of these two is the fastest. The fastest drive gets the games. The runner-up gets the data, for now. When all is said and done, there will be a high-performance drive for games, a high-performance 2.5 for data, and an energy-efficient 2.5 for backup. Okay, round two. First, the champion. 130-ish tops. Now, the challenger. As predicted, this drive is getting the games. It breaks 200 megs a second, under ideal conditions at least. Here's the SSD that it's competing against. The fastest games go on here, but there isn't a lot of space. And then there's the mechanical drive, which is a little bit less hopelessly behind the SSD now. <laughs> and just like that, it's Sunday. Yeah, I should have figured. When you're copying over the lion's share of a one terabyte drive onto a 5400 RPM laptop drive, uh, right. Everything's installed now, though, and it looks like the edge has been taken off of the new drive already now that it actually has some real data on it and it's been broken in a bit. Still the best drive in the system, 180s. <laughs> and then sadly, it looks like our friend, the old laptop Steam drive, has taken a hit as well, 60s and whatnot, but that drive has to be efficient rather than fast. So, where do we go from here? Well, for one thing, the hippie drive is out of the system, as is the old Seagate. These two are essentially backup media, so they're not going to see any action whatsoever for the next couple of days. So, these things are just going to stay as is, in case something happens with the new drives, the data is still on them, we'll just copy the data back. So these things will just go somewhere for a bit. And meanwhile, the experiment with the two and a half drives for replacing the, in the data array is going to continue because, yeah, 5400 RPM, rather low performance after all that data was clobbered onto it. It's 85% full anyways. 
but quite frankly, I know that there's better out there in terms of two and a half drives, and I definitely know that they will be better on power than even the so-called green drives that are the full three and a half inches. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.